Tomasz Schaffernaker, 44, has taken to Twitter to share updates as he was caught up in the undersea earthquake which shook part of western Indonesia this morning. The BBC weatherman admitted the experience was somewhat unsettling as he felt an explosion deep underground before being briefly jolted upwards. Tomasz took to Twitter to share what had happened in view of his 97,200 followers with a video of the unsettling weather and how close he was to the 6. 2 magnitude undersea earthquake in Indonesia. He wrote, it's not often that you get to experience a thunderstorm and an hashtag earthquake at the same time. Like something exploded deep underground and briefly jolted us upwards. Somewhat unsettling but interesting. Restaurant staff were even startled for a second. I won't forget this quake storm. Social media users shared their concern in the comments, while Winterfell1701 commented, Sounds great, Bali, sitting on an active subduction zone, has lots of EQs and volcanoes, the storm would not be related to cause of EQ before anyone suggests it. A case of correlation, not causation. Tomasz replied, Indeed it was an unbelievable coincidence and not something I will ever experience again. But, the quake itself was very mild of course. However, I'm so surprised that such a bump would come from a 4. 5 fourths point 6 as deep as 72 kilometers. Can anyone explain why it was such a jolt? The magnitude 6. 2 earthquake was centered 40 kilometers, 25 miles, southeast of Sinkiel, a coastal district in Aceh province at a depth of 37 kilometers, 23 miles, the U.S. Geological Survey said. No tsunami alert was issued by Indonesia's Meteorology, Climatology and Geophysics Agency and there were no immediate reports of serious damage or casualties. A magnitude 5.6 earthquake on November 21 last year killed at least 331 people and injured nearly 600 in West Java's Sianjur city. It was the deadliest in Indonesia since a 2018 earthquake and tsunami in Sulawesi killed about 4,340 people. In 2004, an extremely powerful Indian Ocean quake set off a tsunami that killed more than 230,000 people in a dozen countries, most of them in Indonesia's Aceh province. This comes after Tomas took to Twitter last year to admit that he had been busted for wearing trainers on the BBC weather show. As some viewers grumbled about an alleged lack of professionalism, Tomasz dismissively declared that anyone complaining over footwear was a bore, and cheekily advised them to buy the same pair for £45. I really love my super bright white sneakers, so comfy and especially chosen for the big set, he defended to overloyal BBC viewers. There'll be a few boars who moan and groan about them, he continued. Grumpy expat immediately hit back, I'm in the boar camp. Just looks like you've cycled in and forgot to pack your shoes. However, at DRW12 defended, gone, I hope, are the days when we would insist on whether forecasters trust up in suits and ties. As long as the forecasts are accurate and easy to understand, I don't care what people wear. But you're always on point with your outfits. Naturally, during the pandemic, many office workers would have related to Thomas's predicament, with some having conducted Zoom meetings at home while secretly in pajama shorts or tracksuits. Yet the BBC is held to a high sartorial standard by some exacting viewers, who declared Tomasz unprofessional. 
at Valerie Elson exclaimed, What is this outbreak of trainers amongst presenters on the BBC News? Do you all go running after the broadcast? Hardly skipping a beat, Tomash joked back, Yeah, 100%. My desk is in Oxford Street but the weather map is in Shepherd's Bush. I have to run between the two 16 times a day. Only way to stay trim. Kay Burley of Sky News also appeared on air in trainers earlier in the year, although in her case, she clarified it was due to breaking her foot. 